Hey, what is going on guys? In this video, I'm doing a review of the Asus RT-AC68U dual band router. Now this router does support 2.4 gigahertz and 5 gigahertz signal with support of 802.11 ABGN and AC signal. It does also feature a dual core processor inside, but I'm not sure what type. It has 128 megabytes of internal storage and 256 megabytes of DDR3 RAM. Now that dual core processor is meant for better responsiveness, and for better file management through the USB ports, which I'll be explaining very shortly. Now keep in mind this is a fairly large router, but I don't mind because the performance is absolutely amazing. But in terms of just general appearance, it is a very, very attractive looking device. Now in terms of theoretical speeds on the 2.4 GHz signal, you could reach theoretical speeds of 600 megabits per second. And on the 5 GHz signal, you can reach theoretical speeds of 1300 megabits per second. Of course, you'll never be able to reach those two types of speeds, but it is theoretical speeds. Do keep in mind that generally though, the performance is really overkill for this router, but I actually find that to be a good thing for the price tag because it's future-proofing my home network. Now on the front of the router, we have some LED notificator lights. Now the first four on the left indicate how many devices are physically connected through a gigabit port at the back. That E looking mark is your internet connection if you have an internet plugged in. Then you have USB 3.0 and 2.0 ports for file management, which I'll be discussing later on. But keep in mind that the USB 3.0 port is overkill. I never use or accomplish any USB 3.0 speeds on this router. Then of course you have 2.4 and 5 GHz signal letting you know that they're both active and working. And the power LED light letting you know that it's actually powered on. And over on the right side we actually have two buttons. One is a WPS button and one is the button to turn Wi-Fi on and off, which is very convenient instead of having to go into the router settings through the 192.168 page, which can be kind of annoying. And over on the back we have a lot of ports that correspond to those LED lights I demonstrated. You have the 4 gigabit ports to connect your computer and laptop other devices. This LED light I'll talk about shortly. Then you have the internet connection where you plug in your modem for internet. USB 3.0 and 2.0 ports, a power button and just below it where the power is plugged in and a reset button on the top left to data factor reset the router. Now the LED light basically turns on the LED light on and off at the back, the ASUS light, which looks pretty cool but is actually pretty pointless. The problem with turning it off is that it actually turns off the LED lights at the front so I personally recommend, or I personally choose rather, to leave it on all the time. Getting a wider view of the back, you'll notice that there's a lot of ventilation space at the back and just some at the top near the antennae, which isn't a major deal considering that the router stays relatively cool. But the problem is it's not designed to sit horizontally. Now you can flip the antennae up, which isn't a major deal, but when you have all your ethernet connection wires plugged in at the back, the router tends to sit on top of them. And then of course you can't plug in a USB stick or any USB device at the back, because again, the router will be sitting on top of it. So you can get away with sitting it on its horizontal side, but it's not designed to do that, which might be a little bit unfortunate for people with very minimal space. So right now I'm easily 120 feet away from the router, there's a lot of walls in between. I just want to demonstrate that I'm actually still able to get signal on my smartphone. It's just barely there, but hey, I'm still getting signal, and yes, I can browse the web. And of course, as you would expect, browsing the web is a little bit slow, but considering that the range and how many walls are in between, again, 120 feet easy is the distance of what I'm at. I'm impressed I'm still even able to connect to the wireless router let alone connecting to the internet and loading some web pages. So besides being a great router in terms of wireless signal and just the amount of ports available on it, the software is actually one of the most fundamental things about this router. The amount of customization you have here is ridiculous. Now if, if any time you see anything blurred out it's because I have sensitive data there that I don't want to share so just don't pay any attention to it. So what you're seeing now is the primary page of when you log into the router's settings. Here you're able to see how many devices are connected. So right now, in my own home network, I have four devices connected to the router. And of course, I have one of two USB ports plugged in. It's a USB stick. And I'll get into that a little bit later on. And over here on system status, I have quick status and ability to change the wireless passwords just very quickly, just for quick access. Now I'm gonna go through some of these options very quickly because there's way too many to go through and it could take well over an hour but generally the interface is designed so that if you're an advanced user of networking or if you're a beginner, you can basically follow along with pretty much whatever is available. It's designed so that anyone can use this router and configure it. So we'll go over to guest network, which basically allows you to enable a guest account. 
So for example, you have someone coming over for one evening and you want them to have access to the internet, but you don't want them to have access to your intranet. So your uh, network files, perhaps you have some sensitive information you don't want to share, but they do need internet access. You can just simply enable an account and you can give them a password or you can give them an open account in which they do not need a password and of course you can even set a time limit of how long this account will be available so if you're going over to traffic manager this basically allows you to sort out stuff like quality of service so for example you play a lot of video games and you want to make sure a lot of bandwidth is dedicated to say your video game console you have that ability here by enabling quality of service traffic monitor basically allows you to manage and look at the connection and the status of what's being used, how much data, and on what type of connections. Right now, no one is really doing anything on my internet, obviously. That's why the numbers are so small, but if I were to say stream something on YouTube and HD content, these numbers would be flying up pretty high. Parental control is one of the coolest things here for parents. Um, basically, and as you can see, all, well most, not all, but most of the interfaces here tend to have these big descriptions as to what you can do and how to use them. And if I'm moving too fast at any point and you see something interesting, just pause the video and read it for yourself. But basically, if you have a teenager or a kid that say they have their own tablet, for example, and they tend to use it uh, well into late hours of the night, but you want them to stop using it and go to sleep, you have the ability to lock down certain devices. As long as you get the MAC address, which is fairly simple, as long as you can do that, you can actually manage what time they'll have access to the internet and what time it will turn off. Of course, USB application is where ASUS puts a lot of emphasis on this router in terms of the software. AI disk basically allows you to share stuff through your USB stick. I already have one configured and they give you like a temporary uh, IP address which you can use to access that information. So for example, I have a USB stick plugged in right now. So if I were to click this link in a new tab, uh, there's my four gigabyte USB stick. And if I open it, I have some folders in here. So here's something very important to keep in mind about using the FTP and USB sticks and keeping data and sharing it is that I have the USB stick here which is 4 gigabytes and if I click it I'm now in the root directory of the USB stick. In Windows before I had plugged it into the router I took my USB stick and I put a video here. I copied and pasted a video here and when I accessed it like this through the ASUS router FTP settings for the life of me, I could not find it. That's not what you do. You don't paste any files here at all, especially video. Video wasn't working. You have to make another folder in your USB stick. It can be named anything you want. So I just made something random like sub. And there you go. Now I can actually access the files and I'm able to download them. But moving along, if you go back to USB application, you have a whole bunch of other options. You have uh, FTP setup, which allows for more detail and you can restrict which folders are accessible and how can they modify them. You can add like certain profiles here and restrictions. You have media server, which basically I have it set to on. So anything on my USB stick, I can access it on my TV. Then you have network Samba and we'll just continue on. You have network printer, which basically allows you to connect a printer to the back of one of the USB ports. If you have a 3G or 4G stick of some kind, and you're on the go and perhaps you have the ASUS router with you, you can plug in that USB stick into the back of the router and you have a portable router with you. Obviously it needs power to plug into a power outlet though. Time Machine is more of suited to uh, Mac users, um, so it does have some Time Machine capabilities built into it. And then there's Download Master. So once you log in, what you're basically able to do is click Add and you're able to browse around for torrent files or perhaps you don't have a torrent file we have a HTTP or FTP site you want to connect to instead, you can just type it in here, the URL for it. And you're able to see a list of all downloads and uploads that are happening. And before, whenever I put something to download or upload on the AC66U model, once something was downloading or uploading, this whole interface became laggy. It's still a little bit laggy, but the dual core processor has made it much better than before. It's laggy again, but better. Then you have some customization settings available. Um, in which you can configure a bit more. So moving along to AI Cloud, you have a few options available here. For example, if you're plugging a USB stick into the router, but you're on LTE connection on your phone, if you download an app for Google Play um, or iOS from the App Store, you can actually still download your files as long as you have the login credentials from the router. You can access them from anywhere, actually. You have the ability to access your computer devices and if they're shared to the router, 
And of course you also have wake on sleep if in case your PC is sleeping. If your motherboard supports this function, it'll wake it up from sleep. And of course you have some cloud storage options available from Asus. Smart Sync basically allows you to configure these options a little bit more. Again, pause the video and just look for yourself. And of course, then you have Sync Server. This is all integrated into AI Cloud, as I mentioned. These are just some subcategories which allow you to configure things a lot more in more detail. Wireless basically allows you to configure a bit more admin access and configure the uh, wireless security credentials a little bit more and you have more details of uh, the way you want the frequency set, some of the channels so they don't interfere and have some crosstalk and cause some problems. LAN basically allows you to change certain things like say the IP address of the router, so by default it's 192.168.1.1. If you want to change it, you have the ability to do it here under LAN and LAN IP. You can configure your DHCP server, uh, the route, and a whole bunch of other stuff. Again, I'm just gonna skip through this a little bit quickly. Then you have also stuff like WAN, which you can configure, say, uh, DNS. You have the ability to set up a dual WAN in case there is a fault. You can go to like a backup option available. Uh, here you can configure ports and stuff like that. Of course, moving along, we have IP version 6, which a lot of people will not be using, but you do have some configuration options available. Moving along, you also have a VPN options, which you can set up, and this allows you to have a lot of uh, setup and settings options available. Everything that is accessible here, pretty much the primary headers, tend to have a lot of subsections in which you can configure a lot more detail. You also have additional firewalls, so if you have a Windows firewall setting, good for you, but if you want additional security, you have even more options available with the router's firewall setting, and there's a ton of options available. And of course, then you have administration mode. This is basically the administrator's role in which you configure how you want the router to be set up. So for example, you can have like a default router, just something simple that you would in say a Soho or your just general home use. And of course, then you can have repeater mode, which basically will extend the signal of the uh, internet wirelessly if you want. And of course, access point extends the internet's connection, but via a wired connection instead of a wireless one. So if you have a couple of Asus routers, they do tend to have these options available. If, if the Asus router is new enough or if you update your software, you can actually have them communicate with each other and extend your signal by a huge amount. Then of course you can go over to system in which you can change your administrator password and so on with the more specific details like your time zone and software updates which you can download directly into the router or download it onto a uh, storage device and then upload it from there. And of course you can data factor reset or save your current settings which is always neat to have in case you have to reset the router you can load it back up. Switching over to system log it's just your basic log files. Basically, you can look for any type of details in case you're looking for a specific error of some kind, or perhaps you're looking to see which type of device is connected, you have the ability to see it here. And of course, lastly, we have network tools, which is just basically, you know, we trying to make sure that everything's working okay. And as I mentioned before, you have Wake on LAN, which basically allows you to wake up your computer if it's sleeping, again, if the motherboard supports it. So that's my review of the Asus RTAC68U wireless router. Now I do want to mention one thing that I'm not going to list as a con, is that the $200 price tag Canadian dollars is pretty expensive, but I'm not listing it as a con because this router is worth every penny, but the average person cannot afford that. What I do recommend is if you're looking for something cheaper, get the Asus RT AC66U, which is one model below this one. The name is similar, so I'll just put a link to the review of that router in the video description for your easy access. This router is one of the most responsive you can get on the market because it has a dual core processor built inside. It has two USB ports. Now I want to keep one thing clear. I have no idea what kind of capacity USB stick in you can use or external hard drive if it will even work at all. It depends on how big the storage is and how many files you have on the storage. You can manage your files internally on your network with, through the USB stick or you can manage your computer files or USB stick files on the go on your mobile device like your smartphone or tablet. Now the range is definitely there. After all those walls I had to send the signal through, after all that distance I had demonstrated for you guys outside, the range is insane on this router. The speed is not an exception either. Now I have the router one floor above my smart TV and my smart TV is connected wirelessly to the network. Now I'm streaming HD content from my computer to the smart TV and I'm able to fast forward, pause, rewind 
instantly. You would think that I'm actually playing content through the USB stick plugged in directly to the TV. So that's my review of the Asus RTAC68U, which is a mouthful and is a definitely worth checking out router if you can afford it. And if you guys found this video useful, be sure to check out my Facebook, Google Plus, Twitter links in the video description. Hit the like button, it does help. Subscribe and thanks for watching.